Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to talk uh, politics. We're going to talk about Ukraine. I'm with my very good friend in New York, Mark Lesserol, uh, who has been publishing uh, a lot of articles in the last uh, years and something about uh, uh, the war in Ukraine and the political situation connected to it. So welcome, uh, Mr. Mark. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you, Mr. David? Good, good, good. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you have been very productive in, in the last uh, year and something, um, publishing a lot of articles. This is back in, in 2022, in March, April. Um, so first question is why why are you so uh, involved into this conflict why what is what trick you uh, to to publish so much well I, I i remember it was a couple of weeks before the war uh, broke out and there was some stories about you know what was could could, could potentially happen and i became really fascinated by it. I mean, there were a lot of stories going on a year ago that one could become fascinated with, but this one, for some reason, my intuition just said, this is something to pay attention to. So I got a, a little bit of a head start. I mean, I didn't predict that there would be an invasion, um, but I started looking into the situation. I started looking into some of the details and then lo and behold, it, it happened. Um, and from there, I started to really, um, yeah, follow it, and and you know, I could see how it was, I could see how it wasn't a provincial, you know, just a provincial issue, and that it related to all of us, being that um, you know, Russia is is the number one nuclear power, the United States probably number two, so or definitely number two. So I could see that this was uh, something that could really be very dangerous and something that I, I, I wanted to pay attention to, sorry, in a very sort of uh, meticulous way. So yeah, I started off writing like, you know, I come from, I guess the left, I come from the left of center. Um, so I started looking at point you know the, the, there was one point of view coming from the mainstream west which was you know, putin is terribly evil and um the only way to think about this is that we have to you know we have to attack and continue to attack until until you know there's regime change or there's whatever whatever it was the running meme at the time um so i started to look at you know people like chris hedges um john mearsheimer who isn't of the left but he's a he's a, an analyst who has has a different point of view and i started to see that there was a narrative that we were being fed that there were other options too um you know i i, I was against the invasion from the beginning i in no way support it uh i'm, a, I'm no fan of of, of putin but the idea that we were getting a lot of that we were getting fed information that wasn't true and I felt was dangerous because with a situation like this, you want to you want to know what's really happening. So I began that was the beginning of, of, of my my investigation. So I moved from not, first the first month or two, I, I was sort of using my left sources. I've got a truckload of those. But then I thought this, in order to get a real, a really true, um, or as true as possible, look at what's going on here. It's not about just looking at mainstream sources. You know, I look, I have a subscription to the New York Times. I look at the Washington Post and all of those things. And then my left of center people uh, who I, I um, rely on as well. I thought this is the only way to really get an idea is to go outside of the Western spectrum altogether and to start looking at, I started to look at things from other countries. I started to look at things from South America. I started to look at news from India about the war. I started to look at news from Russia about the war. And I found a lot of propaganda out there, 
uh, as well. But I sort of developed this system, which was, okay, take it all in, put it all together, and then sort of cross-check it as, as, as the weeks go by and see, you know, who, who is telling, you know, who is closer to the truth. Um, and over a period of time, I, I developed... Yeah, sorry. Either you and I have to ask you, how do you know what is the truth? I mean, what? No, that's, how do you, how that's do you get to that point? Because, uh, I mean, in some way, you can. Everybody can argue that this is the truth, and <laughs> and so what is it? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's sort of like if you if you're doing therapy for a dysfunctional family, right? You would want to, and you had you know five kids and two parents. You'd want to listen to everyone's point of view right you wouldn't just like talk to and listen to one person in the family and then derive all of your opinions from that one person so i looked at it in in, in that light okay so ultimately you're never going to know what's true with a capital t but the only way to get closer to the truth is to listen to all you know to listen to the multiple points of view then to sort of cross check it with things that have been agreed upon you know, as, as time moves on, there are certain things like there's a live UA map, which is it's a it's a pro-Ukraine map. But it, it over time it has it shows what is, you know, what what territories have been taken and what haven't, uh, which ones haven't. It's pretty it's pretty that's about as reliable a, a source as I've seen out there. Anyway, that was the point of view that I took. And and. You know, I'm still not in favor of the invasion. Uh, you know, I'm a nonviolent activist, so obviously it's it's something that is horrifying to me. But what I found is that I feel that the United States has been using Ukraine um, for its own objectives, um, and. Yeah, a lot of people have have died and been very seriously wounded. Um, and it's getting to a point now where there's a growing feeling that this is not going well for Ukraine. Yet the United States continues to push, to escalate, specifically the the, the people in the White House. Even the people in the Pentagon now are sort of saying, we might want to slow this down a little bit. Uh, General Milley has gone back and forth. But Victoria Nuland... Uh, who is a child of Dick Cheney, not literally, but a, was a student of Cheney and Rumsfeld and, and is a very hardcore neocon, along with Jake Sullivan and uh, Anthony Blinken in the White House with, with the president in tow. It's sort of up for grabs as to how much say he has. Yeah, have been really pushing this thing to, to a tremendously dangerous point not only for the people of Ukraine, but for, for, for the world. You know, it seems like every day we're getting closer and closer to, to something that, you know, there's not going to be a nuclear war. <laughs> there's going to be destruction if, if, if it escalates to that level. So anyway, I've... So, I've so, where, where was I? <laughs> so, yeah. So we publish um, an article... Uh, I mean, he published himself, Tony, published an article where he argued that our issue right now is these two clan stories, where we need to, showing then if you, if you have the concept of two clan, of two sides of the story, you are not putting the human being as a central value. It's not the most important for you. So, and the only way to resolve that issue is to put the human being as 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 it is the life of human being as as the most important and to go and to build everything based on that to uh, resolve the conflict and and uh, move to another space what what is your take on this absolutely i mean i think we share that i'm, I'm definitely a humanist um i'm a siloist actually um yeah, the human being is always it's it's the central va central value, and everything has to revolve around yeah not not about which faction is the best of the two or the um, 
but what is what is the decision that is best for the people involved in the conflict and humanity as a whole but yeah my angle is not to 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 my angle in the articles is well no i have to confess it is partially i do have a bone to pick with the neocons of the last 20 years i think they've driven us what they've done to the world is is quite reprehensible and i am very much against it um but my my ultimately my aim is not just to say hey look look at what we've done um but to to bring a, a sort of a more multifaceted perspective uh to people as opposed to you either despise putin as a ghoul from hell who wants this imperialist who wants to take over europe and we have to immediately stop him now and risk potential nuclear war or you're a putin puppet you know there's only two options here you can, it's very hard to have a discussion about this so no, but it's difficult to have a discussion about everything because everything is built against the, the against something else so the democrats are against the republican and then so we spend our lives uh being into this dynamic of having to choose uh to choose where we are where are we from what are we looking to and and have to to uh, to take side all the time instead of uh, really uh, getting together to another level of okay this boat is one boat and we 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 need to <laughs> to sh to drive yeah. it in another direction it has to be steered to something else well it's, it's it's a great it's so it's it's so bizarre because you know the the democratic party here in the United States was has always been the party of peace or or anti-war or closer to that than the Republican party and now it's sort of shifted like you yeah. to, to 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 bring up around a, um, a mainstream Democrat, the idea of, you know, a ceasefire is sort of like, how dare you, you know, like, because their context is so, it's, it's so, it's formed on a, on a, on an idea of what we are and what Russia is over the last, I'd say eight years, there's been a, a lot of propaganda about what, what, what Russia is about, what we're about. And so people are very trained to attack. Um, anyway, back to your point. Yeah, it's and this thing of left and right nowadays, I, I, yeah, I'm sort of, I think somebody somebody referred to me, they said, it was, it was a few months back, you know, you're too, I'm too left to be of the left. So I'm, he, he referred to me, I'm alt-right adjacent. So I'm too That's left. True. I'm too left to be of the left. So I'm of the right. It's just it's get, it's getting silly, and I think ultimately it's just sort of dividing us. The, these these very polar, very very corporately generated ideas of what is acceptable to think about and talk about. And if we can break through that and just and look at what's really happening outside the mainstream media's um, deregulated, totally corporately dominated um narratives we can we can say oh jesus you know about 70 we, we agree about we agree on about 70 percent of stuff people on the right and the left um and and it's 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 precisely our pushing against each other and not listening to each to each other that is sort of allowing this thing to continue what is that roger waters line appropriate person to, to bring up here um together we stand united we fall sounds cliche as uh, cliche ish out of context but it's from hey you and his album the wall so yeah as long as we stay divided and, and unable to think outside the parameters that we've been given to think in we're kind of screwed we're just gonna it's i hate you because you like those seven things you've associated yourself with those seven things and no i hate you because you've associated yourself with those seven things that my faction is against it it's um it is that simple it is so that how do you see simple. to close to close our uh, 
discussion today. How do you see the next uh, six months or the next year, or how do you how do you see it going? You mean in in Ukraine or here? Uh, <laughs> Anywhere you want. I, I, <laughs> at that at that level, we can. Uh, I know. I don't know. I, light okay. board, and you can give us. Go for it. I wish. <laughs> I wish I had. Yeah, I don't. I think it's gonna. There's gonna be a lot of rockiness in the next six months because I don't. I I don't see. I don't see. Uh, I should, let me. I shouldn't say that. I do see. I do see it percolating. This people are beginning to move outside the narrative. I said, but within the next six months, I think there's going to be a lot of rockiness. Uh, I don't think. I don't think I don't, I don't think things are going well in Ukraine. That's another thing. I know we don't have much time left, but um, I think we've been hugely misinformed about what's happening in Ukraine. I think that Ukraine is not going to win. Win is not it, Ukraine is is going to be crushed. Um, I don't think it's going to exist as as a as a nation as we've known it uh, by the beginning. I, I I don't want to put a date on it, but that's the path we're going down there and um gosh i don't want to leave on a on a on a negative note um yeah i, I, I despite that i do think that that there is a lot percolating people are beginning to see through um beginning to see through the 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 pigeonhole narratives the the restrictions of thought and i i think yeah i think in the i think in the coming years there's going to be there's going to be a shift. I am I am optimistic about that. In in the, in the coming years, in this decade, there is going to be a shift, and hopefully, we'll be able to steer it in an interesting way, in a humanist way. That would be my hope. Thank you so much. That was our show with Mark Lesserol. Please keep watching your news on Presencia.com, and we hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.